What's up, Ego Hackers? Welcome to the CS Joseph Podcast. Today's question, how can I, as an ENTP, get along well with my bandmates? What a question. It's like kind of like random and whatnot, but like, seriously, an ENTP in a band? That's, uh, that's definitely something different. Kind of reminds me of Macklemore and Ryan Lewis to a point, because like, I think Macklemore is uh, an INFJ and Ryan Lewis is an ENTP. I mean, I can, I can kind of, I can kind of get with that, but like, when you got like multiple bandmates coming together, it can definitely be a little difficult, especially since all of the egos that are present in the room, right? <laughs> how do you, how do you manage all those egos? Well, there's a couple of ways. Looking at a non-psychological approach, um, or at least non-Jungian analytical psychology, non four sides the mind approach. Uh, I'd recommend you read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People to begin with, and then just follow those basic principles to start until you actually get good enough at Jungian analytical psychology, four sides of mind, and the octogram to be able to uh, properly ego hack your bandmates in order for their benefit and also for your benefit as well. Just make sure it's mutually beneficial. Oftentimes, people like Eric Thor, for example, just assume that I'm teaching social engineering so that, you know, in uh, manipulating somebody else, I'm the only one gaining an advantage and no one else is, which I find repugnant and that's not what I teach here on uh, this channel. So anyway, so with that being said, like handling all those egos for the band is a big deal. Like if you have an ISFP in there, you got to understand that like this, the, the band is basically their purpose and sometimes they're going to want to take charge. So make sure that you go with that. You kind of follow them. If there's an ESTP, they're actually going to try to take charge, but sometimes they get so drained for being responsible for the experience that they become insanely controlling and that can cause problems as well. Naturally, I would spend more time trying to submit to the ISFP's leadership than the ESTP's leadership. If you folks don't even exactly have a, an agreement in terms of who's who's running it then obviously if there's an ESFP present just show them respect that's all you got to do just show them respect and they're happy you don't have to even worry about it and uh, if you have an ISTP just compliment them compliment them on a regular basis you know give them that validation that cognitive origin of validation that they crave and it really comes down to that like if you know the specific types of the people that you're working with in the band literally just feed them their cognitive origin and they'll be completely fine Connection matters for the ESTP, purpose matters for the ISFP, reverence matters for the ESFP, and validation matters for the ISTP. And if you're like the ENTP, the only, uh, the only uh, abstract person in a sea of concrete people in terms of your band, because the person that asked this question kind of revealed the types as the people that are, that, that, that are their bandmates, I mean, that could, be, that could be a huge concern. It could be difficult. So... That really matters. It's, it matters to keep track of that in a big way on a regular, on a regular basis whenever possible. Cognitive origins never change and no one is not going to be happy with receiving their cognitive origin. Like literally no one. However, when you are looking at their octograms and you actually can figure out what their octograms are, you have a unique opportunity to potentially ego hack them from the perspective of reaching their shadow pole or their aspiration pole or their deadly sin of living virtue. Because sometimes people like receiving uh, that which they put out or actually they like to receive the opposite of what they're putting out, and especially when it comes to the temple wheels. So from the temple wheel perspective, identify, work really hard to identify the octograms of your bandmates. And all you have to do to do that is just figure out if they're closer to deadly sin or if they're closer to their living virtue or if they're closer to their shadow pole or if they're closer to their aspiration pole. And then whichever one they're closely for, closely, closest to and you can determine closeness based on how much of it you see, basically. How much of it they're like putting out there, that determines what their octogram is. And then basically you just need to work hard to give them the, the opposing or the opposite uh, pole or uh, deadly sin living virtue basically. And then you've made them very happy and just keep consistently doing that. The problem is though, 
as an ENTP, you're at risk of just becoming a people pleaser, and then you probably won't be satisfied, and you probably will be end up losing reverence or respect from your bandmates specifically. So you're going to have to pick and choose who you ally yourself with. You can't make everybody happy as much as I would like to hope that you could, but the reality situation isn't. Which means there needs to be an established hierarchy or an established authority, basically. And if there isn't one, and you are the authority, that's going to be fascinating. But the thing is, is that if you are the authority as the ENTP, you might want to actually put the IN or the ISFP in a position of authority if possible. Don't let the ESTP be an authority because then that's just actually going to destroy the band over time. Same thing goes with the ISTP. STPs, as much as they would like to pride themselves into being great leaders, they're really not that great of a leader. I'd actually rather have, submit to an SFP's leadership than an STP's leadership any day of the week. Unless, of course, that STP is being paid by me as like a therapist or a mentor or specifically like they are like there to teach me something, but not, not to be like a leader of a band and, and take a creative lead. Really, in terms of creative leadership, you really want the ISFP to actually be running that band. Um, and it's the only way it's gonna work harmoniously in the wrong run. Which is gonna be hard because the TI parent and the TI hero of the STPs are gonna be putting a lot of pressure on the expert thinking inferior of the ISTP. So as a result of that, I highly recommend uh, you go out of your way to be supportive of the expert thinking inferior of the ISFP and basically like protect them, you know, show up for them, be their voice because oftentimes they're not going to speak up and always make sure that you're including their opinion in all of the conversations and all of the discussion. It's absolutely critical that you do this. Not doing this can actually cause a lot of problems uh, after a while and you don't want to be the person who has those problems you really really don't it's much more important it's much more important to uh, make sure that you're going out of your way to get as much harmony as possible out of your band because again if without that hierarchy there's no way that creativity could actually happen because the creativity may end up being stifled it could cause the band to break up and you have so many like artisans all in one place, it's really difficult to choose the pecking order, but the ENTJ subconscious of the ISFB has to lead. Without that pecking order, you're not gonna get anywhere. So just make sure that you are trying to stay as connected to the ESTP as much as possible, right? This, this means even showing terms of loyalty or making sure that they too have a voice, making sure that TI parent is allowed to verify or chime in. Uh, and then just be really accepting towards the ISTP. That's all you have to do. You don't even really have to listen to them that much, but just be super accepting of them. And then towards the ESFP, show them respect so that when they actually do take the opportunity to speak, give them the floor, listen, share your thoughts on it, but don't dismiss them. Don't be dismissive of the ESFP. And for the ISFP, Really give them the opportunity to have the final say whenever possible. Make them feel like that they are an authority. Make them feel like that they're able to actually direct the creativity in some capacity. You need to be going out of your way to empower the ISFP as much as possible because as soon as that ENTJ subconscious is out, the band is gonna be far more successful over time. And it's, it's really hard to get fellow SPs to submit to another SP. It's really, really hard because they all want to have the spotlight basically and it's competition for the spotlight. But from your perspective, you have to make them realize it's not about the spotlight. It's actually about, it's about the music, it's about the audience, it's about, it's about what they can give. It's not so much what they can get out of it. And if you keep reminding them of that, it'll be really, really important. But the way that you can do that is make sure that you are the one who are serving up the cognitive origins to these four people instead of trying and so that they, they're not trying to extract cognitive origins from each other and stressing each other out. It's just one of those things because when you're considering macro engineering, you really have to get to a point for macro social engineering, you have to get to the point where you have to pick your battles. And that can be like super frustrating in that situation when it comes to dealing with bandmates because just the pride and the ego with everyone involved can severely be a problem. And really like, most, most, uh, most bands that have, you know, that are comprised primarily of men or just men basically, like they stick together because there usually is like a really core relationship between uh, some of the men. Like for example, Chester Bennington and Mike Shinoda as the foundational relationship for the band Linkin Park, right? 
you as the ENTP need to make sure that you are having, that you are that foundational relationship and it's got to be between you and the ISFP in that particular mode. Of it. And then, uh, but you know, make sure that you're doing that. Also like with the ESTP present, like be kind to them, give them a ton of kindness. Kindness goes a long way for an ESTP and they won't, uh, they won't forget it. Sometimes they need to learn how to be kind and if they don't have anyone being an example of being kind, that's from that perspective and what that point of view is. It's necessary, it's entirely necessary because without that, they're not gonna get anywhere in their life. They're not gonna be successful in life, like not even remotely, which is sad. It's actually really sad. It actually really hurts, you know, in the long time for them to have that inability to be connected to other people, but it's because they're trying to, um, they're trying to, um, what do you say? Uh, they're trying, just trying to feel connected to other people. And you can help them be connected by being kind yourself so they mirror your kindness and then they'll mirror your kindness towards your bandmates, basically. And the ESFP, you know, will mirror your intelligence when you start sharing your thoughts. But make sure you always do it from a perspective of fairness. It, the band is just not an appropriate place to use your malevolence. It just really isn't. So don't be malevolent. Be a little bit more fanatical. Fanatical of everyone present. You may starve for fanaticism yourself. You may want these guys to be a fan of you, but really at the end of the day, it's not about you. It's about the music. It's about your audience. It's about the band as a whole. It's not about you. So you want to make sure as an ENTP that you're dying to yourself, basically, for the sake of the life of the band itself. So yeah. All right, hopefully uh, that answers that question. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.